with you. So would that be a salary cap and base model if you guys didn't need to? I don't think so. I don't think the players would change the level. Let it happen. Um, the fact that the Major League Baseball Players Association is a different piece than many other sports. They're far more powerful. And you know, the question is, you know, do they need it? Yeah, I, I think baseball, Major League Baseball, as opposed to the Players Association, I think Major League Baseball has a long history of trying to fix their problem and instead making things way worse. Um, and I think they're about to do that with the draft. But I, I, I think you know, anything in any sort of collective bargaining agreement comes up even to create a slippery slope toward a salary cap. You know, we don't even have uh, a, a true slotting system for draft picks right now. We don't have any sort of limit on spending internationally. Uh, anytime anything like that comes up, anyone talks about any sort of cap of money, the player associates the no way of a slippery slope toward a salary cap. So I, I think you will have one without some sort of horrible lock in because the players will never, never, ever do. Because what the Yankees are doing is, is just ridiculous and shameful. But they've won one World Series in the last seven years, you know. And at the same time, the, the Marlins have won two World Series with nothing. You know, teams, get, you can do it. There's more than one way to skin a cat here. It's a disadvantage for sure. But it's, you know, this has been going on since baseball. I mean, if you go, you, I mean, if you go open a baseball and like theater, pull up baseball records and look at the 50s when the Yankees won every year. You know, and then you look at the, and there were teams that were bad every year. It was the same basic structure every year. And it's the same as always, but the fact that the money is so big now, the fact that we now have free agency, which didn't have back then, people pay more attention to it. But I, there's no less parity in baseball than there was really ever. It's, it's, I think there's actually a lot of more parity. There's more parity right now. So there's, not, I don't think there's necessarily a real compelling argument for it because a lot of teams that, I think there's a lot of those small market teams that cry wolf and cry for me, for me, but a lot of other small market teams have proven that you can do this. Look, I mean, the Rays are a good example right now. They don't have a ton of money, and it's one of the best teams in baseball, they got to the World Series a couple of years back. So, you know, I think if you, when you take a step back, I, I don't necessarily think you need one, but the more important fact is in reality is the players are never going to come close to giving up. In 2002, the owners proposed a salary floor, whereas teams like the Royals and, and the A's would have to spend a minimum amount. The players said, absolutely not. We don't want to tell any team how much or how little to right. spend. And again, that's like getting it's back to years. Right, that's the thing. I mean, that's that's, 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 that's that's the, this will guarantee more money from the players. The players said, no way. And uh, the other uh, part of that equation is revenue sharing. Any salary cap will be tied to increased revenue sharing over a lot of owners' dead bodies. Right. The, the other thing is that, is that uh, when you're the New York Yankees, you, you buy the Yankees for their name, for their what they can draw in revenue. But they, they are not going to agree to give a significant amount of money to, the, to other teams. So the, uh, it's not just the players, it's on him and the ownership that you're not going to get them to agree. Right. Ba it's baseball stuff is very different from football or the NBA. It's not as much as but football, the owners are, are fairly united, a fairly united front. Um, and they play one game a they, week. And they play one game a week. Baseball, the owners are very disparate, and, it, and there's a lot of different opinions as far as what to do. And so the problem is they can't bring a unified front to the players. Well, the players always have, frankly, the strongest unified Maybe front in sports. In football, it's uh, moving more to I want to say also the greatness of baseball, I think, is that it can overcome this. It has overcome this for the last you know, century, but even in the last 10 years, if you look at the Yankees' one World Series, baseball has couple of inherent things about the sport that allow it to survive without a lot of payroll parity. I don't think the NBA or the NFL, frankly, if you had the kind of rules you have in baseball in the NBA and the NFL, you would have far more dynasty than you do in those sports or you would have baseball. There are two reasons, two main reasons I think why, uh, even though the Yankees have three times the, the payroll of those teams or whatever, that they don't win their world. Two, two reasons. One being, home field advantage is not that important. I mean, for, that's for the NFL. Right? Home field is so important football especially, uh, well actually NBA too, I think it's 65% of, of teams, you know, teams win, that you know, the best team in the regular season has such an advantage in the playoffs that they are, you know, it's, it's an upset any time the home team loses. Whereas in baseball, you're only getting home field three out of five or four out of seven games in the first place, and it's just not that valuable. And then the other thing is baseball is so much more, this is more with basketball, but baseball is so much more of a team sport. It's 25 man roster. Basketball, we got five guys on the field. Or on the court, you have 10 or 11 man rosters. If you've got two superstar players, you're going to 
going to win. It's done. And, and, you know, you got LeBron James, you got Kobe Bryant. It really doesn't matter what you do. The best player in baseball, you can have Albert Pujols, you're not guaranteed anything. You can be the Yankees and have four or five superstars, you're not guaranteed that the best teams don't win more than about two thirds of their game. Whereas in the NBA and the NFL, it's like 80 or 90 percent. So baseball's inherent structure limits the, the, the impact that a lack of payroll parity can have. And the other thing, and I think this goes to something you were saying initially about making a mistake with the draft. I mean, like, this, I think you said about our oldest champion. I mean, like, the fact that Chapman signed with the Red, you know, is, I think, a great indication of the fact that in baseball, you know, players, just because the Yankees had more money than Cincinnati is ever going to have, them, you know, like, the right, and the Yankees don't spend as willy nilly as you think. And the Reds, I mean, the Reds were going to pay what they were going to pay for Chapman. I guarantee you. So the Hendricks brothers called the Yankees and they said, "Look, the Reds are going to pay this." And the Yankees went, "Good for them." Yeah, we're not we're not paying that much. We're not interested. Yeah, a lot of the international. I mean, Sano went to the Twins and uh, Noah went to the. And they're still barred. That's the thing. These guys are still barred. We can complain about million and two million dollar bonuses in the draft, but in the grand scheme of a baseball budget. Those are the biggest bargains in the game, and every team knows it, which is why you're starting to see the royal and the pirates, and, and people like that spend a lot of money going way over slot in draft, being very aggressive internationally, because the money is still very, very little, and the payouts are potentially huge. What do you think Strasburg would have got if he was a free agent? I thought, <laughs> I, play, I think I wrote though, you about yeah, this, no, I, I played that game. Uh, I think if Strasburg was a free agent, it would have been somewhere between 50 and 70.